Hey everyone, Casey Love here. In today's video, I'll be showing you how I paint Trooper from Iron Maiden by Sideshow. Taking it from this to this. Let's get rocking. So sometimes, you know, painting all these statues, we don't always get things across the plate that we're a fan of. That's part of being an artist. So when you do get these projects that you are a fan of, you're just that much more amped up to really work on them and have fun with them. I'm gonna hit this whole thing with the red and get a nice even base coat. I always try to get the base coat on as even as possible. So now I've mixed up some dark black shading and I've thinned it. Now what I'm doing here is pushing some undertone shadow values where I know that the shadows are gonna be very, very dark. And you see me doing that in some of the places where pouches will be laying and things like that and push it to a point. Now I'm just blocking some straight black paint onto some of the parts of his emblems and patches and things. We'll come back and hit those later with some golds and different colors. Now I'm going to base in some of the straps. I'm using like kind of grayish white tone here. Just gonna knock in all that and his skin. This is part of his shoulder. Now we're going back with that gold and we're just lightly dry brushing that to capture all those details, those high points. So the reason we're putting the gold over the black is because not only is in the artwork is it black underneath, but also because it'll always pop off a of black more so than say white or a lighter color. And of course now we're putting in all the gold buckles, and this took a lot of time to do all the buckles and emblems. And of course, this area here, the belt, was very tricky. It took a lot of back and forth work to get that correct. We have a part of his clothing that's pushed up where his leg goes, and it's right in the way of base coating part of the belt and the buckle, and any time you have an object in the way like that, it makes it difficult to get in those tight areas and get a clean paint job laid down. So it takes a lot of back and forth cleanup to get it cleaned up. Now I'm gonna go in and kind of just stipple with a sponge different areas where I want to mimic sand or dirt or grime from the battlefield. The type of sponge we use is a makeup sponge. You know, we've plucked it and pulled it to shape it the way we want. So once we sponge it on, now we're getting this like kind of broken up texture. It looks like something that's laying on top of the clothing as opposed to like being part of the clothing. Sometimes when you translate 2D art to 3D, things can change on how they work and sometimes bright colors or things aren't working as we would like them to. So one of the things we noticed looking at the original artwork, the jeans were bright blue and when we had painted them that way, it just sort of didn't work. We did do a little bit of adjusting to the pants to just tone them down. We were trying to find that nice marriage between the artwork and the real uniform and then the sideshow aesthetic. The reason I've laid down the white is just so that when I go to lay the red down, over the dark blue, it wouldn't pop and look very bright or interesting and nice, so we wanna make sure it pops correctly and looks good. Sponging some more of that dirt and grime, and then moving on to base coating boots. Some of these areas are tricky to get into. I'm working around the shoelaces in different areas. I'll base coat the whole boot black. It's kind of a matte black. It looks shiny, but as you see, it dries out matte. So here I'm actually texturing on a semi-gloss to give the texture of the boot, how the boot would look realistically in person. I layered down the semi-gloss, but now laying down this grime over top of everything, it just gives it these layers. It helps to kind of give you the idea that once the boot was clean before it got into war, and now there's mud all over it. Of course, shading the boot covers much darker and grimier than the rest of the suit. I mean, these uniforms, that part would be just as bright as the straps, but because it's at a lower point of his body, it just feels more natural to dirty it up a bit more and darken it. Okay, so now we're basing out the base. 
I'm using rattle cans. You'll see me just kind of doing a rough couple colors here. I'll spray a tan and then a, a warm. I'm using colors that I see in the artwork and just trying to get something quickly laid down there. The sculptor on this project was James Kane, and James is a fantastic sculptor out of the UK, who is also a fan of Iron Maiden. And James had done what I would say the most amazing Eddie Trooper I've ever seen and brought it to the next level. I mean, the textures, the details, and the forms and the pose and everything in there just really sings. It was a pleasure to be able to paint this statue and be a part of the team that brings this thing to life. And way to go, James. You knocked this one out of the park, man. I'm just sponging over the rock to get the gray tones. So I've got my undertones are the all the rattle can colors you saw me do, and now the grays. And now I'm going to kind of go around and do a, a spatter just to give a little more of a different texture and color. Spattering is just a simple technique where you have a chip brush and you've cut that to a short bristle and then we're dipping it into some very thin paint that's been thinned with water and alcohol. And then when you flick it, it gives us this extra layer. It, it gives us a little bit of color push, a different, different tone. Brushwork will always be brushwork. Spatter will always look like something different. When you start to combine that, obviously with the sponging, we start to get all these different layers laying down of different techniques that look really well together and then it just gives you a nice kind of a realistic look in the end. So a lot of times we'll start with bright colors and then basically tone them down with washes and different techniques to bring them back into more of a realistic world. You're not seeing this, but I'm spending a lot of time looking at the artwork, making comparisons, deciding where we want to go. Right here, I'm going to make a pretty big adjustment to the green. You can't really see it. I'm putting this sort of olive lime green shade over top. because I noticed that the green that I laid down wasn't exactly matching the artwork. These hands and stuff are a little tricky because, you know, you're trying to work flesh tones around all this rock. And, of course, his face had rubble and things, so I had to go in with a brush and just play with washes, and it's hard to get the right angle with an airbrush. You know, when you have a flesh thing against this rock and all this different rubble, you want the hand to obviously sit out, but you also don't want it to stand out in a way that it doesn't look like it's part of the world it's living in. So, you know, you want to add the grime and all the dirt and texture to the hand so that it lives in that base properly. Each piece of this statue has a lot of texture that the sculptor put in, which was really nice to work over. You know, it allowed us to really play with textures and layers and different things. So obviously here I'm aging up the metal, start putting in some rust, and then using a chrome pen right now to add some highlight chrome hits where some of the rust and things have been taken away back to the bare metal. You know, maybe a rock hit the side of that piece of metal or something as they were traveling. You know, we put all these layers in, but then go bring some of the metal back, and it helps to tell the story a little bit better. I'm putting on with one sponge and using another cleaner sponge to take off or to blend down all these layers and layers until finally we get a base that looks like this battlefield of death and destruction. I really use a lot of those Citadel miniature paints. Shades are basically thin paints that you can lay in and wipe off really easy and it goes right into all the crevices. You can take any acrylic and make it into a wash with water and different additives. A little bit of flow troll helps the paint flow a little bit, but you can't add too much of it. It gets too soapy. What happens is you'll get areas where it'll bite into that matte layer where other areas won't and it causes a headache if, if say you're doing skin or something or a portrait but I always use those because they're ready to go out of the bottle. Now this little canteen piece was the most difficult part, in my opinion, of the whole entire statue. It took the, the longest to do because there's just one element after another. There's wood, metal, rope, buckles, you name it. Everything's on this one little piece and it's literally the hardest part of the whole statue. <laughs> Now, the interesting thing about the flag in the artwork for Trooper, the flag was this bright 
bright royal blue, but really the British flag is a darker navy blue. So your eyes just wanted to go to the flag only and not to the figure. So we had to sort of reassess that with the team. And as much as we want to copy the artwork and pay tribute to the artist and make sure it really reads as Iron Maiden had it, we also want to make sure that everything's working together in one unit to sell the whole idea and the look of the statue. Obviously, probably the most fun piece on the whole statue because it's Eddie and it's, you know, his portrait. Obviously, there's a lot of nice wrinkles and detail textures in the face, so we want to bring all that stuff out. And this is one of those elements, I believe, where paying attention to the album art was crucial. This was not the most complex paint job by any means, but there was just a lot of back and forth pushing of color and tone and highlights and shadows to finally get to the point of the portrait where it looks like what I'm seeing on the artwork by Derek Riggs. Derek is best known for his Eddie creations and his artwork for Iron Maiden. It's very important to us to try to get as close as we could. Of course, our end goal is to try to marry the beautiful artwork done by Derek and then, of course, the sideshow aesthetic to make a beautiful statue in the end that pays tribute to Iron Maiden. I remember as I grew up listening to Iron Maiden, just being blown away. I just have so many fond memories of Iron Maiden. I mean, I've seen them live numerous times and followed their careers, and they've just always risen above and beyond all the time. And even to today, they're writing amazing music and continuing on. And it's just a pleasure and an honor to be able to be a small part of making and helping to bring to life these beautiful Iron Maiden statues. And uh, yeah, definitely an honor and one of my top projects I've gotten to work on at Sideshow. And there it is, the finished piece. Yeah.